All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the DeMichael's Parts mod, which was originally made by form user DeMichael. It's now being continued by Zero Kerbal. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely selection of various parts for either rockets or space planes. And technically, this is actually four separate mods, but you can either get it in just one big download or four separate ones. So I'm just going to look at the whole thing together here today. So let's look at the vehicle assembly building and have a gander at what we do get here. Now let's actually grab ourselves a Mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison today and then just leave on the dumb Michael parts. And let's start in the fuel tanks category as that's where the parts themselves do begin and have a look at our first fuel tank the DMF Flat End, which is a lovely radial fuel tank which holds 45 liquid fuel and 55 oxidizer. And if we do pop this thing on here, as you can see, it fits quite nightly, nicely rather, to the contours of the 2.5 meter parts here and has an attachment point on the end so that you can continue building down from it, adding additional fuel and even engines eventually once we get to another part to the sides of your ships and that is pretty cool I like this little part now to go with it and extend it further we do then have two different sizes of tanks here the DMF flat fuel tank X1 and X2 now the X1 will hold 72 liquid fuel and 88 oxidizer and the X2 will hold twice that at 144 liquid fuel and 176 oxidizer and again if I place that on here you can see that it does contour quite nicely nicely why do I keep saying nightly rather than nicely? I don't know. But it fits quite well to the curved edge of the vessel and then has attachment points on either end so that you can continue building downward. Now to go along with those and sort of cap off the end, we have the DMF flat to 1.25 meter round adapter, which will hold liquid fuel in 90 and oxidizer in 110. And once more, it does contour to the side sides and ends up in a nice rounded section as you can see here for putting on an engine or whatever the else you do desire. All in all, a cool little system for you to really extend the sides of your ships out. Very cool indeed. Now after that we have a series of different spherical fuel tanks all by the name of Mark 1 Spherical Fuel Tank with the largest being the 10,000 liter tank and the smallest being the a 612.5 liter tank and the size or capacity rather will range from the smallest tank holding 55 liquid fuel and 67 oxidizer to the largest of the tanks holding 900 liquid fuel and 1100 oxidizer so yeah you've got a lot of fuel capacity in these things and as you can see here they are nice looking little spherical tanks now they seem to actually fit more in line with their end caps uh uh, with the 1.25 meter size but you know I mean add a adapter or something along those lines to sort of taper it inward and it'll work fine on really any size. Now there is a little bit of a graphical glitch with these the just lighting on them seems to bounce a little bit oddly but all in all it's still a fun useful tank. Now after that sadly we have nothing in engines nor in command and control nor structural robotics or in coupling, but in payload, we have three different DeMichael's cargo bays, which are in a one meter, a two meter, and a four meter length variety for you to enjoy. And if I pop on any of them, really, we can uh, just slap that on there, right click and open it up. A very nice little cargo bay for you to fit anything you need. And if say the four or two meter isn't long enough, of course you can extend it with the other additional pieces, which is pretty good. Now let's pop those off and then head down to the aerodynamics category where we have three parts, the first of which being the DMF flat intake, which is an air intake for your space plane needs and will actually bring in 
to intake air. And if we pop this thing on, again, it does fit with that sort of uh, contoured bits like the fuel tanks we looked at earlier, but is a good start with the uh, air intake there for any of your space planes. Very nice indeed. Then after that, we do have the DMF Slanted Cone, which is just a, well, slanted cone, as you can see here. It actually seems to be ever so slightly wider than 1.25 meters, but all in all is still a good little cone for you to use on your rockets. And the final thing that we have in this category, which technically should actually be down here in communication, is this, the DMF Small Radial Tail Boom. As it is not an aerodynamic part in any way, shape, or form, no, it is a data transmitter. Why it's there, I don't know. Possibly a glitch. But as you can see here, it's a pretty nice little thing. I actually do like it. It doesn't uh, take up much room. It's nice and sleek to, the, uh, to be put to the side of your ship. And could be used in even some nice aesthetic uh, uses, as I actually kind of played around with on my god-awful ship that I created with all this stuff earlier but a fun little antenna. Now the final two parts that we have are down here in electrical, where we have first the PB Nuka Aerodynamic Radio Isotope Thermoelectric Generator, which is an electrical generator producing 0.8 electric charge per second and does have a battery on board able to hold 25 electric charge. And as you can see here, it's basically just a nice little, uh, pretty sleek side attachable RTG for your electrical needs. A fun little device there. I do like it. And then after that, we have the PB Zap A Radial Aerodynamic Fuel Cell, which will take liquid fuel and air intake to create electric charge at a rate of 1.5 per second. It also does have a battery on board holding 25 electric charge, and if we pop it on right there, it is just another nice little aerodynamic generator for you to put on the sides of your rockets or space planes. Very cool. And all in all, some very nice parts in this pack. Now, like I said, sadly earlier, we didn't have any command pods added in by this thing, but all the different parts are pretty fun, and I created this monstrosity of a rocket earlier, which surprisingly actually does fly. We've got just the uh, Mark 1-3 command pod up there, so all of this up here is sort of vanilla parts. Then pretty much everything but the structural adapters here are all the modded parts. We've got ourselves a nice cargo bay, two of the different spherical tanks, and down on the sides, actually quite like the uh, use of the radial tail boom antennae on the side of the ship just to add a little bit more of an interesting aesthetic to the side and even to the back end over here. Pretty cool looking, I think. And yeah, it's just a fun, odd little ship that, yeah, if we actually do go to launch, again, like I said a minute ago, surprisingly flies. I thought this thing would just fall over like a stone, but no, no, it does take off. It's got a pretty decent amount of fuel, and if we actually do look at the smooth open animation on this thing, there we go, a lovely smooth animation there, very nice, and uh, yeah, close that back up and prepare to launch. Let's turn on our SAS, get ourselves a nice a screenshot for the, uh, for the thumbnail of the video, excellent, and then launch this thing in three, two, one lift off and yeah i mean it's just a lot of different fuel tanks both uh in the spherical tanks and the radial side engines which i really do love these radial uh fuel tanks here they just fit so nicely with the 2.5 meter fuselages that it just works and whether you're using it on a rocket like this or on a space plane to make things a bit more aerodynamic it's just cool looking. I really do enjoy it. And the spherical tanks are good additions for any bases or space stations, rockets, what have you. And who doesn't love a good new cargo bay? Well, yes, that is really everything there is to talk about with the Dumb Michaels parts pack here. 
a lovely little set of things, which if you'd like to check out for yourself, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode, when hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!